All right, welcome back to video number two in the Get Email Marketing Clients video series, a five-part video series on how to make one to $10,000 per month writing emails for clients. In this video, we're gonna talk about your dream client and how to get them, and then also how to make sure that you're reaching out to the right clients. So here we are in the series in video one, the last video. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you go back and do so. We talked about the freelance copywriting model explain and why it's a great place to start. Uh, make sure you watch that before you watch this one or this one's probably not gonna make too much sense. But let's jump right into it now. So here's what we're gonna cover today. First, the five criteria of a dream email copywriting client. These are my personal criteria that I look for, but uh, I recommend you do this as well, especially if you're a beginner just getting started. We'll talk about the three things that you need to get your dream client and how to get clients using a fake portfolio. And don't worry, this is not shady, it's not black cat, it's 100% ethical, as long as you as you follow what I'm gonna tell you in this video. Uh, but let's, let's hop right in. So, five criteria of a dream email copywriting client. What do I look for when I'm going out and searching for clients? Uh, number one, they're doing mid six to seven figures a year or more. So your dream client should be able to easily afford your services. You don't wanna be you know, battling back and forth on price because it's their last dollar or they can't rub two nickels together. You wanna to make sure that they're already an established business, right? They're already doing well. They have an offer or product or service that converts and they're selling stuff to the tune of mid six to seven figures or a year or more. And they should be able to easily afford your services, which is anywhere from a thousand to $5,000 per month, right? So that's number one. This is the, the easiest thing to make sure that you get better paying clients is to just target clients that are established businesses that are not just brand new startups who don't have their first customer yet, which is a very common mistake, by the way. Number two, sales products or services online. So email can definitely work for local mom and pops. I'm not saying don't target them if that's an industry that you wanna work with, like local businesses, but businesses who sell stuff via the internet are the easiest to get trackable results for. So I like to work with companies and businesses who sell their products and services online or for the most part online. Number three, a clear understanding of their market. This is so crucial because as a copywriter, uh, you're, it's not really about wordsmithing, right? It's not, it's not about writing the best words or the fanciest words. It's about knowing the market and being able to, being able to speak to their pain points and their problems and their challenges and where they wanna go, right? So if you go to a client or a prospect and you ask them who they serve, uh, who their market is, and they say, we help everyone or everyone, everyone, uh, slowly turn around and walk away, right? Just don't work with them. Don't take them on. Even if you need the cash, just trust me, you're not going to want to work with someone who has no idea who they're actually serving. Uh, so slowly turn around and walk away. Make sure that you are working with a client who clearly knows their market because that's going to make sure that you do a good job and that you're able to write emails and, and copy that actually sells their stuff, right? And that's gonna make you look good. It gets you a testimonial or a case study and then you can use that to get more and better high paying clients. Number four, has an email list. You are an email copywriter, you're not a list builder. Well, I guess you can be a list builder if you want, but it makes your life a whole lot more difficult and complicated and overwhelming if you're trying to build their list and write emails to their list at the same time. So if you're an email copywriter, remember that your only deliverables is, is words on a text doc or a Google doc that you're handing over to them and they're sending it to their list to help them generate more sales. Uh, so that's, I mean, that makes your life a whole lot easier if you're just handing over a text doc rather than just building and setting up opt-in pages and landing pages and uh, running traffic to it. You don't wanna be in charge of all of that. It's just gonna be very, very, very difficult to manage all that at once. Uh, you want to work with businesses who already have an email list and just need to milk more sales from it. And a, and a lot of businesses, I, if you don't believe me, get on, go to any business's website, get on their email list, their newsletter, and then see what they send out. Most businesses won't even send you an email right after you opt in. They'll send you like a, a, like a confirmation, but they won't send you any kind of welcome email or any kind of sequence to get you into any of their paid products or programs. Uh, so you want to go to businesses that already have an email list and work with those where you don't have to build their list for them. You're just writing emails to monetize their existing asset. Number five, the fifth criteria is to find businesses that are already spending money on advertising and marketing. Super important. This could be in the form of paid ads, employees, freelancers, or working with agencies. The last thing that you wanna do is have to educate a client on why they need to be spending money on marketing. 
Right? If they're not spending, they don't have any employees that are you know marketers or, or salespeople, or they're not working with agencies or freelancers, they're not running any paid ads, they're gonna you're gonna go to them and they're gonna say, why tell me why I need to spend money in marketing and, and advertising. And most likely this business, if they're not doing that, they're probably gonna be out of business within six months to a year, uh, but that's a different story, right? You don't wanna have to educate them on why they need this. That's just, it's, it's you don't wanna deal with that, okay? Uh, so finding companies who fit these five criteria is crucial. If you take on a client who's a bad fit, you won't be able to do a good job, right? And they're gonna blame you for it. So if you can't, if you go and pick a bad client who doesn't fit one of these criteria and you can't get them results, they're gonna say it's your fault. They're gonna say, hey, it's, something's wrong with what you're doing. And a lot of the time, it's not even your fault. It's just that you might've picked the wrong client to work with where you can't actually get them results. So p picking a, a client that fits these five criteria is huge for making sure that you can get results, get a testimonial, get a case study, and turn that into more and better, higher paying clients. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say that you work with a new startup, someone who hasn't gotten their first client or customer yet. You write them killer emails that sell, the best emails ever, right? You could be the best email copywriter on earth, but they have no list to sell it to, right? What do you think is gonna happen? You can write them the best emails in the world, but what's gonna happen? They don't have an email list, so they can't use it, right? So, but they're gonna come back and say, where are my magical sales, Sean? Like you said, you're gonna get me sales. You wrote me these emails. Where are my sales, right? So you can work, you can write the best emails in the world, but you, if you work with the wrong client who doesn't have the right assets for you to help them monetize, uh, you can't get them results and they're gonna blame you for that. So the best copywriter in the world in this example wouldn't be able to get them results. Number one copy in the, copywriter in the world wouldn't be able to get them results because they don't have anything to, they don't have traffic, they don't have an email list, they don't have any way to utilize that copy. So follow these five criteria, very important. These are my personal recommended five criteria. Uh, you might have your own after doing your own research, but this is where I recommend you start if you have no idea where to start. It ensures that you can only, that you only work with businesses that you can help, which is very important. So let's talk about the three things that you need to get your dream client. Number one, you need a defined niche. So you should have a clear idea of the types of companies that you wanna work with, right? You wanna work with e-commerce, you wanna work with online fitness, course creators, service providers. Get clear on who you are targeting. This is gonna make your life a whole lot easier because now you can get really, really focused on a certain niche, a certain industry, and really speak their language when you're doing outreach, which we'll talk about in video number three, or f video number three, so the next one. Number two, you need an irresistible productized service offering. So this means a service where the value exceeds the price they pay and where every client gets that same core service. So when you sell a productized offering, you remove time as the basis on which you're paid. You're getting paid based on the output and the results, not based on the amount of hours you work, right? So an example could be daily emails. You might be writing them an email every weekday for these clients. And you're not getting paid on, you're on hourly, you're getting paid a monthly package. It could be, let's just say $3,500 per month, which is what we started with. And you're writing 20 emails. And each of those emails could take you, you know, 10, 20, 30 minutes to write. You're still getting paid the same whether it takes you, to, takes you 30 minutes to write or two hours to write, right? So it's not really attached on your time. That's not how you're paid. It's attached to the output and the results and what they're getting. And a productized service offering allows you to do that, to separate time as the basis on what you're paid. Number three is a small portfolio. So especially in the copywriting space, it's important that clients wanna see what you've done. And it doesn't need to be sample, like if you're just getting started, it doesn't need to be samples of exactly like clients that you've worked with. Everybody has to start somewhere. So if you didn't have your first clients yet, create a fake portfolio, right? Just make up a business, make up a company, and pretend that you already have them as a client and write emails for them, right? This is 100% ethical. You're not saying I have this person as a client or this is a real business if you create a fake business. You're saying here is some samples of my work. This is the types of companies that this email is targeting. This is the types of products that they're selling. And it's 100% ethical. So let's talk about how to do that now. How to get clients using a fake portfolio or how to create a fake portfolio. Once you've nailed down the niche you want to target and your productized service offering, do the following. Number one, find a company that you'd like to work with. So search for a company in your niche that you'd love to write emails for. So for example, if you're targeting CBD companies, there's a company called Pure Canna. You might use 
Pure Canna as an example, Let's pretend you already have them as a client, and write an email to sell their products, right? That's the beauty of copywriting is you can write up samples and practice before you even get your first client, which is gonna help you get that first client, right? Which is creating a sample of a portfolio of your work. Number two, write two to three sample emails. Pretend as if you already landed them as a client, write a few emails to sell their main flagship product. Number three, you're gonna use these samples for outreach. This is 100% ethical as long as you don't lie by saying they're your client if they're not. Prospects wanna see that you can write and the samples demonstrate that you can do that, right? So step one, find a company you'd like to work with or you can create one, you know, create a fake business as long as you don't say it's real. Uh, number two is to write two to three sample emails, pretend you already have them as a client and write emails that sell their products. And number three, use these samples when you're doing outreach, which we'll talk about in video number three next week. Uh, you can even create fake businesses, I just mentioned this, but with fake products to write emails for. This will help you to practice your copywriting and sharpen your skills far before you ever get a client, right? So if you, I mean, you could start with targeting companies that you'd like to work with, like Pure Canna, but if you can't, if you wanna get creative with it, you can create some fake businesses with fake products and write emails for them, right? Again, clients just wanna see that you can write. The main thing is that you are writing every day, practicing, sharpening your skills, and getting good at the craft. That's what clients wanna see most. They wanna see that you can write, right? They can write, that you can write emails that sell. That you're good at what you do and that you have the skill to help them make more money with your words, right? That's the main thing that clients care about is that you can get them results and that you can write words and they feel confident in your ability to do so. So recap of what we covered. We talked about the five criteria of a dream email copywriting client. Go back and watch this video again and take a picture if you need to. The three things that you need to get your, three, to get your dream client and how to get clients using a fake portfolio or creating fake businesses and writing emails as samples for those fake businesses. So no excuses, okay? Even if you don't have your first client, this is how you go and get your first client. Next week, we're gonna talk about how to reach out to clients without feeling like a sleazeball, right? Doing prospecting and outreach to clients who fit our dream client profile. If you haven't yet, make sure you join the Facebook group www.emailrainmaker.com. That'll take you to my Facebook group, which is free. You'll answer three questions to join. I'll approve it within a few days. And I share a ton of extra stuff in there as well. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the group and looking forward to seeing you next week. Make sure you like this video and comment below with any questions and I will see you again real soon.